So the three main organs which are uh, concerned with sodium hemostasis is kidney, which is the main regulator of sodium balance, followed by central nervous system and the vessel baroreceptor, which is related to the sympathetic system and the volume balance. And kidney, how it regulates the sodium balance through the renin angiotensin pathway. Finally, aldosterone, which is the main mechanism for sodium and water retention. And from the central nervous system, you have the antidiuretic hormone through arginine vasopressin. Again, sodium reabsorption can happen. And whenever there is a volume loss, your baroreceptor gets stimulated and automatically it leads to a pathway where volume retention can happen. These are the various ways where the sodium as well as the volume is regulated. And you have some form of natriuretic peptide which comes from the heart to excrete sodium in case there is volume overload. Here you have to understand two major components. What it does do the hydrogen ion concentration and another one is what happens to carbon dioxide. So where is the regulation of soda bicarbonate is happening? The first and foremost is the kidney. Your bicarbonate is exchange for hydrogen ion and the major regulator for this part is the kidney. And another important component which you have to take care is carbon dioxide. Carbonic acid breaks down into water and carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide is excreted by the lung. So, the two major organ which is involved in the regulation of bicarbonate is kidney in which the bicarbonate is exchanged for hydrogen ion and lung where your carbon dioxide is exhaled. This calcium which is released, okay. Now, how does calcium induce muscle contraction? Here you have troponin and this part is the tropomyosin which covers the myosin binding site in the actin. So, when the calcium is released, it goes and binds with troponin and this troponin calcium complex causes a conformational change in tropomyosin exposing the myosin binding sites. Once the myosin binding sites are exposed, this is the myosin head and the first step is ATP is hydrolyzed when the myosin head is unattached to the actin. Then next step is the myosin binding site is exposed and now the myosin head attaches to the actin. As it attaches to the actin, the contraction happens and finally the myosin head comes back to normal position when the ATP is binding to myosin. Now how we are going to manage high and low level of chloride? First measure the serum chloride. If it is at the normal level of 96 to 105 millimole per liter, you just monitor and try to preserve the chloride homeostasis as much as possible. If the chloride is going to be high, which is greater than 105 millimole per liter, you go for checking the albumin, arterial blood gas, serum potassium chloride, and bicarbonate ion. And you address the Underlying cause like hypotonic fluid loss, hemoconcentration, excessive intravenous saline administration or it might be metabolic acidosis. Always remember metabolic acidosis go along with hyperchloremia. And if it is less than 2.5, it is severe hypokalemia. Coming to hyperkalemia, it is mild when it is between 5 to 5.5 millimole per liter, moderate when it is 5.5 to 6.5 and severe it is between 6.5 to 7 millimole per liter. Now coming to hypokalemia. What are the various etiological processes where the potassium level can go down? The first and foremost, your intake of potassium, your dietary potassium is very low or there is going to be increased potassium loss to the renal or extra renal 
loss. Third most important physiological component which causes hyperkalemia is the transcellular shift which in another word is called the intracellular uptake. Coming to the etiology of each factor, low intake or increased loss or the transcellular shift. 